On behalf of the Missoula Chamber of Commerce's Board of Directors, I'd like to welcome you to the Missoula Chamber's State of Missoula Address. Uh, if I get you at this time to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Chamber's co-chairs of the Governmental Affairs Committee. We'll facilitate today's meetings and introduce our elected officials for their comments. Jack Chambers with Opportunity Resources and Julie Gamar-Williams with JGW Consulting. Jack, the podium is yours. I don't know, on my agenda it says he has 10 minutes, so I think he needs to come back up here and say a few things while I figure out what I'm supposed to do. No, it is uh, actually my pleasure to, to introduce our first speaker of the afternoon. And uh, first of all, it's great to see so many people here. Wow, great turnout, thanks. So many uh, uh, community servants we have in the audience, thank you for coming. So it is, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce Michelle Lanquist. Our, she's our current chair of our county commissioners. And Michelle is born in, I'm going to probably beat that one up, aren't I? Bremerhaven, just like I would have done it. In Germany, um, into a military family during her formative years while moving around the country and the world, she attended 11 schools in 12 years. Michelle fell in love with Missoula as a child in the mid-60s when she lived here for about three years while her father was assigned at Fort Missoula in the National Guard, as a National Guard advisor. She moved back to Missoula a few years after graduating from high school in the mid-70s. Missoula County has been her home now for more than 36 years. Before pursuing her formal higher education, she worked at a number of, in a number of fields, including Montana Recycling Center, owned and operated custom cleaning service, worked in the uh, home health care field, managed Davis second hand. Michelle graduated from the University of Montana in 1999 with a BA in biology natural history emphasis, and a minor in communications. She began working for the Watershed Education Network as a field coordinator, followed by working uh, for the Lolo Watershed Group, where she eventually had several, held several positions, but ended up uh, being their executive director. Michelle has, has taken keen interest in being involved in the community. And you can certainly tell that by the, her past involvement and current. Uh, in the past, she has been active in a Lolo PTA, Girl Scout leader, 4-H leader, FFA Alumni Association, Lolo Florence Lions Club, and served two elected terms as the Lolo Community Council on the Lolo Community Council. Pre presently, she's a member of the Montana Environmental Education Association, Montana Wool Growers, Montana Sheep Growers Association. Got a theme going there, don't we? Uh, and Preservation uh, Preserve Historic Missoula, and served two terms and served two years on uh, Missoula County Open Land Advisory Committee. As commissioner, Michelle serves on the, the Bitterroot RC and D Council, the Human Resource Council Board, the Larchmont Golf Course Board, the Missoula Ra uh, Ravalli Transportation Management Association, and the Transportation Policy Coordinating Committee Board. Michelle's happily married to Bruce Lanquist, 
and ha has two grown daughters, three grandchildren, and loves raising sheep, gardening, and gardening in their small family farm in Lolo. So I'd like you to welcome our first speaker of the day, uh, Commissioner Lanquist. Thank you for that warm introduction and greeting my fellow Missoula County citizens. It's an honor for me to stand here before you today to deliver the State of Missoula County address. This year, the Chamber requested a little something different, that the address be geared in the direction of answering a primary question of what is local government doing to meet the new opportunities ahead. Well, in writing this presentation, I have a long version, plan A. <laughs> I have a shorter version, and I have an abbreviated version of the short version, because the, even the short version was too long to, to tell you today how the county is positioning themselves to move ahead and make use of good opportunities and what we do for the citizens of the county. And I want to meet my obligation to the chamber. You hosted this. Thank you very much for this opportunity and for buying lunch. That was sweet, too. Uh, but I also have an obligation to the taxpayers out there who probably want more information than what I could deliver here in my allotted 20 minutes. So I want to put it out there for everybody now that by the end of the afternoon, my short version that I can't even get all the way through here today will be online and available for anybody that wants to request one by snail mail. And if my schedule holds like it looks like it might for the afternoon, the, the longer version may be available by late this afternoon, if not, maybe by Friday. So getting back to the question, what is local government doing to meet the new opportunities ahead? First, I wanna make sure everybody understands what the role of county government is, what our limitations are, and why. We're asked all the time, just what is it that you county commissioners do? Well, the short answer is, we're responsible for the protecting the health, welfare, and safety of the citizens who reside in our county jurisdiction. As a county, we are your local branch of state government. We are responsible to abide and enforce the laws of state government while providing public services that promote health, welfare, and safety of its citizens. As a county entity, we are not self-governing like the city of Missoula. So essentially what that means, we have only the power to take action in areas expressly granted to us by federal and state laws. So in addition to, to conducting routine public bus business, the commissioners examine various new opportunities on a fairly regular basis. We evaluate them to determine if they fit within the parameters of what we are allowed to do within the confines of those laws that we must follow. And we don't, unfortunately, have a crystal ball for predicting what those new opportunities will be. However, some of what we do know is that by law, we are responsible to review and update our county's growth policy and plan every 10 years, make whatever updates are mandated to us from new or changing laws from either the state or the federal government. And some of those most recognizable updates occur in the form of things like our subdivision regulations, air and water quality regs, our local transportation plan, fire regulations, building codes, etc. I think you're all pretty familiar with those things. Um, economic development, per se, is not something in the literal sense that falls within our mandated role, though we obviously realize how important a stable economy is and the role economic development plays in our growth policies and very la various land use plans. This is why we get involved to the degree that we do to help facilitate communication and collaboration with various agencies and economic development groups while maintaining our first priority of providing public services that are required and expected of us. For example, we support organizations such as the Bitterroot Economic Development District, which maintains the comprehensive economic development strategy 
for Missoula, Mineral, and Ravalli counties. Well, part of conducting our routine business also includes, if anybody's ever looked at our agenda, we attend lots of meetings on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Some of those meetings are with, with our county staff, department heads, um, transportation. Quarterly, we meet with the land manor, managers. Uh, that would be DNRC, BLM, BLM, U.S. Forest Service, Plum Creek. Uh, we also meet with the city council on a quarterly basis. We meet with the mayor on a monthly basis. Some new additions that we have to that to, to improve, improve uh, relationships are we now we will be meeting with the consolidated confederated Salish Kootenai tribes. We've agreed that it would be beneficial for us to meet at least twice a year. And the commissioners last year started meeting with other county commissioners from Western Montana and the develop, development groups that serve them. And those include Ravalli, Mineral, Sanders, Lake, Flathead, and Lincoln counties. And these meetings help us stay better informed on a status of a variety of ongoing projects, what if any new challenges we have, how we can number, overcome those challenges, identify common interests, and discuss any legal or financial limitations. We always look at what opportunities may be on the horizon that will help us achieve our goals and how we might be able to work together for the people that we all serve. So one of, one of the, the new fascinating um, things I, I wanted to announce today as far as how well positioned Missoula County is to, to help people and move on to, to new opportunities has to do with the Partnership Health Center. As many people probably know, about 16 years ago with the county support, Partnership Health Center began to ser serve low income and underserved people in our community with affordable health care services. Missoula County has continued to be a critical link in the advancement of this health center. And the highlight for last year was the acquisition of the Creamy Creamery building. This new facility is over 24,000 square feet, which more than doubles the size of their first facility and provides the potential to serve double the amount of patients they are serving now. Currently, they, they serve approximately 12,000 patients annually, and they've been receiving about 200 calls per week for new patients looking to access for care. Renovation of that space will continue to be a first priority for them, and I think everyone will agree this is a positive step forward in being able to meet some of the important needs to the citizens of Missoula County in the months and years ahead. I should have mentioned at the beginning, so I'll mention it now. <laughs> that I do have some good news and some bad news, and what I just talked about with the PHC was some of the good news. So not shirking my responsibilities as, as an elected official, here's some of the less good news. It's no secret that the management of, and the governance of the fair and the fairgrounds are at a unique crossroads and has attracted a lot of unfortunate and negative attention lately. Managing the fair and governing the fair are two different things, and the process for governing the fair and the fairgrounds continues to evolve. When the county commissioners assumed direct responsibility for the fair several years ago, they requested a county auditor review a variety of the fair's processes and procedures. As a result, to improve business processes, Missoula County has made some workable changes that have developed um, into to making those processes better and tighter, and we're looking at more ways we can do that. Some of that audit recently is going again, and so it's not quite complete, but it's almost there. We also hired consultants about a year or so ago, Crandall and Rambula, and they'll be back in town this spring to attend one of our public meetings and hearings on the preferred alternative that they have developed through lots and lots and lots of public input and many hours. We look forward to reestablishing the management and the governance of the fair, and we will 
have lots of good people working with us to make that happen. Now, as long as we're talking about the fair, I want, want everybody to know, rather than just what was said in my introduction, I'm someone who always has enjoyed attending the fair and the rodeo, as well as being a former 4-H and FF mo FFA mom and alumni and petting zoo manager for more years. I lost track of how many years I was the petting zoo manager. This issue is very near and dear to my heart, and I am always, always ready to discuss it with anyone, but I want those discussions to be productive. On another note, some good news. For those of you that, that are horse racing fans, you'll be happy to know that we're in the final stages of negotiating the contract to bring horse, back, horse racing back for two days for the 2010 fair. So there's, there's an upside. Okay. Some more good news regarding the economic development uh, portion of things. Our Missoula Development Park has undergone a lot of, of infrastructure improvements and continues to spark new interest from businesses wanting to locate there. Due to a $1,250,000 grant from the Economic Development Administration, which helped pay for roads, sewer, water, park, and utilities within the techn technology district, the new sidewalk and trail system is complete. Parks were landscaping, including eight park structures with various picnic tables that were completed using the Blackfoot River sinker logs. And all this, I might add, was done with all local labor. We're pretty proud of that, too. So if you haven't been out to the Missoula Development Park lately, you might, it's just right over that way, unless I've lost my bearings, you might want to take a look. Uh, and I think you'll agree that it's not your ordinary development park, and it's ripe for welcoming new opportunities. Another kind of downside, but upside. After the bond election for the Emergency Operations Center failed in 2008, the county has been working diligently on a new plan, and we have some exciting news to report. I'm almost tempted to ask for a show of hands as to who, who can predict this, but I'll, I'll move on. As many of you have probably noticed, our neighbors to the east, Garlington, Lawn, and Robinson, have started construction on their new building. Their need to expand opened up the wonderful opportunity, and more importantly, an affordable opportunity for our county. We have an agreement in principle, pretty good agreement though, for the lease option of the GLR building that is just across the street from the courthouse. This move will open up space in the courthouse for our high profile or high public traffic departments like the treasurer's office and the courts to expand into the space they need and it accommodates the needs for most of the departments for the next 20 years. It also allows for much needed expansion of the emergency operations center and 911 and will provide the sheriff office, sheriff's office with the adequate space for about 10 years. Perhaps the best news for the taxpayers is that this is because of long-term plan planning, federal assistance for emergency operations facilities, and disciplined budgeting for our capital improvement program. Over the last several years, the county will be able to cover the majority of the costs of the new facilities plan. We're working diligently to pay for this out of current resources, and most importantly, the county this allows us to use more of a phased-in approach to dealing with our, our space needs and operational problems. This means we can chip away at the problem incrementally over several years instead of needing a huge cash infusion all at once. As you recall, back then they were asking for $16 million. million. This will be much less if we have to come back for a bond. And if we do, it won't be for five or six years until the economy has recovered. So I hope you'll agree and join in being very excited with us that this solution is an opportunity that accomplishes so much in the way of providing better services, saving money for the taxpayers, and keeping us located downtown. Seems like a real win-win-win. How much time do I have? Okay. 
Moving on, the fiscal year ahead. We're all concerned with the state of the economy and Missoula County is no different. We're not Im immune to the effects of the recent recession. The slowdown in the real estate and financial markets has had a major impact in certain areas of our budget. Investment earnings are less than half what they were just a couple years ago. Additionally, development-related revenues have declined in the Office of Planning and Grants, Building Codes, and Health Department, Survey and Clerk and Record Quarters Office. We've already made some changes to our budget to address the decline in these types of revenues. For physical year 2010, we reduced five and a half full-time positions in these areas and have made adjustments for another two and a half full-time employees since the budget year started. Thankfully, we've been able to make most of these adjustments through attrition and reassignment. However, we don't anticipate things to get better in fiscal year 2011 for county government. We're anticipating that property tax values may decline as the tax base retracts. This is due to two factors, the first being the slowdown in new construction for county governments. New growth in tax revenue is mainly from the expansion of tax base through new construction called newly taxable property. And we anticipate that 2011 will see a decrease in newly taxable property compared to recent years. Also a ma major position of tax base is from what the Department of Revenue calls centrally assessed properties, which are major industrial companies such as Northwest Energy and Smurfit Stone. The taxable value of these companies is based on the underlying value and profitability of the company. And if this value continues to decrease, as it's likely for Smurfit, we could see a decline in those tax revenues. There's some other factors too, but I'll skip over that, knowing that you guys can go online or request the full copy. There is another glimmer of hope, though, that in September of last year, when the commissioners de declared Missoula County an economic recovery zone under the Federal American Recovery and Re Investment Act of 2009. What this means for us in simple terms is that local government gains the ability to issue taxable bonds where the federal government will pay 45% of the interest. Private business gains the ability to borrow money at a tax exempt rate, which is likely to be around 2% less than their commercial borrowing rate if they meet certain criteria. We have already reallocated a portion of these bonds to the city of Missoula for them to use, should they choose, and recently had a meeting with a local bank who is actively helping a list of local individuals to use some of the remaining portions of this financing tool. I'm gonna start wrapping it up, but I really do hope everybody goes online and requests a copy of the full-blown report. There's so much our county does for you and so much that so many of our departments are, are moving forward to, to accomplish in the future. They serve us well. But I do want to assure you that your county government is working hard, effectively and efficiently on opportunities that contribute to the quality of your life. Our budget is in good condition, even in the middle of this severe economic downturn. Community County department heads have made many rigorous changes to make the most of what they have to work with and continue to look for more ways to save money without cutting budgets. When our local economy entered into this recession last year, beginning first with the building trades industry, I think we all realized it was just the beginning for us. Then before the new year arrived and Smurf had announced their closure, we knew we, we, we would be facing a far-reaching economic storm, and many people set the wheels in motions to prepare for a large and devastating blow. Missoula County, again, is in pretty good condition in a variety of areas to benefit from new opportunities, and we have a lot of good people and organizations working with us to help us restore our economy. You may think this is easier for me to say than it is for some of you to hear right now, but I want to assure you, better times are ahead. And I say this because I know who we are. I know what we're made of. We're Montanans. We're Missoulians. We're neighbors. And we know how to rise above it. 
and weather a bad storm, we have the know-how, the motivation to get the job done by working together, collectively and constructively. I know we'll all do that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lanquist. And we will have a question and answer period when Mayor Ingren is finished speaking. So if you have some thoughts, jot them down. It's my pleasure to introduce our mayor, John Ingren, today. 50th mayor of Missoula. His, he is committed to affordable housing, conservation of Missoula public lands, and, reform, and regulation reform. He was elected in 2005 in a year that started out with six candidates. He was reelected and ran unopposed this past year in November of 2009. Since taking office in 2006, Mayor Ingen made good on his promise to pass an open to help ensure that important lands both in and out of our area were protected for our generation and generations to come. Ingen's affordable housing team has worked over the past two years identifying housing needs in the city, educating neighbors about the importance of affordable housing, and creating momentum for decision makers to, con con excuse me, momentum for the permanent makers to go forward with their housing. In 2008, a clear majority of the Missoula City Council passed an affordable housing resolution formalizing the city's commitment to affordable housing. Under Mayor Ingen's direction, the city embarked on a difficult but very necessary mission of updating and reforming the city's antiquated zoning regulations. Based on his belief that considerable community tension is the product of these outdated regulations, Ingen again, with the support of the majority of the city council, last launched a grassroots effort and in 2009, the council approved the new regulations. With his leadership, and capable city staff, England delivered balanced budgets to the council, continued to deliver important services to our city, and clean, safe streets, fire and medical aid, permits and parks, and so much more that cannot be listed. Before serving as mayor, Ingen served a term in the city council, was an award-winning writer and an editor for the daily paper in Missoula. He owned and operated his own small business and volunteered for a variety of Missoula's nonprofit organization concentrating on human, re on human services. As an amateur auctioneer and an MC, Ingen has helped raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for our friends and neighbors in the community. And many of you most recently probably saw him as Miss G in the Nutcracker over the last holiday season. <laughs> Ingen was born in Missoula, attended Willard School, Hellgate High School, and graduated from the University of Montana with a degree in journalism. His wife, Tracy, continues to operate a travel agency in Missoula. The Ingans live up the Rattlesnake Valley with a rescued greyhound, Patches, a rescued Labradoodle, Odie, a cat, Mittens, who was born in the trunk of his Pontiac, and several fish. It is my pleasure to welcome our mayor, John Ingan. Oh, th thank you very much, Julie. Pleasure to see all of you today. I was very gratified to hear Commissioner Landquist suggest that horse racing would be back at the Western Montana Fair. As some of you know, I used to make a little extra money in the summertime by working as a jockey. So, <laughs> the groundhog, I'm told, saw his shadow today, six more weeks of winter. It seems like winter's been a long haul this year. Though it was lurking in places we didn't look too often, the Great Recession arrived in Missoula in 2009. An iconic paper mill is shuttered, an iconic department store on the corner of Higgins and Front is selling the last of its wares at 50 to 70 percent off Everything must go. An open house to give homeless folks a hand serves nearly 400 in one day. 150 hopeful candidates apply for jobs that attracted 10 applicants two years ago. 
At the city of Missoula, we're accustomed to planning for how we'll do more and do it better, but today we're planning for how we do the same for less. Folks are nervous and looking for answers and maybe a little magic. As the saying goes, there's no magic. There's just hard work, and we're doing it. We've hit some bumps, but the state of Missoula remains strong because of our people, all of you, pulling together to make sure this remarkable place not only survives, but thrives. And we're looking forward. Let's talk about money. You've seen the headlines. Traditional revenues are in the tank, not just in the state of Montana, but in the city of Missoula. So we've been non-traditional. Our staff's been chasing grants, and we've been catching our share. In our fire department, a Safer Act grant brought us $257,000 to pay firefighters this year. Next year, we'll bring another $163,000. A U.S. Department of Transportation grant paid $38,000 for hazard, hazardous materials technical training for our fire, firefighters and $22,000 in federal community development block grant money went toward new fire hydrants in the Franklin to Fort neighborhood, a low-income neighborhood in our city. We used Title III money coming through the county to improve safety by reducing fuels in our wildland urban interface to keep fire danger down and forests healthy. In the coming year, will replace the firefighters' self-contained breathing apparatus, which our chief will tell you can be painful, with an assistance to firefighters grant in the amount of $258,000. Fire Act grants are helping us move forward with the replacement of our 20-year-old ladder truck, which we need to continue to keep people safe. And folks, just for reference, a ladder truck costs $1 million. Our police department has been creative in finding outside resources as well. A Recovery Act Cops Hiring and Retention Program grant of 1.2 five officers for three years. A $575,000 Internet Crimes Against Children grant helped bring new funding and training to Western Montana and helped us establish a full-time internet crimes investigator to protect our children against these crimes. Our department moves into the coming year with an increased creative response to the growing problem of drug abuse. By the end of this year, we'll have received $2.2 million in grants and appropriations in the last 18 months to help this work. It will have helped pay for a dedicated full-time investigator of illeg illegitimate use of prescription drugs. Our police department originated the state drug recognition expert program. We continue to train our officers in that field. That work is also closely tied to our DUI work. During this challenging fiscal year, the police department leadership has had to analyze the department's structure and its priorities, and the department is committed to its highest priority, doing its part to maintain a safe and healthy community. Leadership's identified key risks to our community as prescription drug abuse, which killed 19 people in Missoula in 2009, driving while under the influence, which leads to significant injury and fatalities year after year, youth violence and gang presence, drug trafficking, traffic enforcement, and quality of life issues. Money from the outside is helping us be greener as well. A, North, a Northwestern Energy match of $39,000 helped us install solar power at our Mount Avenue fire station. And after months of work, we've, we've secured a $680,000 energy efficiency and conservation block grant, another federal stimulus program that will allow us to do another phase of our green blocks program. That will bring energy conservation measures to 300 homes in Missoula free of charge, and we hope to do a commercial block downtown. That pilot project last time affected 93 homes. This new money will also set up a revolving loan fund to help supply some small grants for energy conservation projects throughout the city. And it will help fund an energy performance contract to help reduce energy consumption in our city buildings. 
The short version of this is energy efficiency saves people and businesses money. We're working healthier as well at the city of Missoula. Our employees' efforts to take care of themselves through our wellness programs, led by our human resources department, allowed us to reduce our health premium or our health benefit costs by $487,000, a little unusual this day and age. That's $100 per insured employee in premiums, and we'll continue those efforts this year. I'd like to acknowledge the many men and women working for the city of Missoula who are here today and our council members as well. We almost have enough that we could have public comment, so we have that to look forward to later. <laughs> In the coming year, folks, Federal Recovery Act money will help us improve our streets, build sidewalks, uh, curbs, and ramps that are safe for people with disabilities, build new curbs, bike lanes, and pavements on Brook Street. Our North uh, Higgins Avenue Street Cape Streetscape project will bring downtown master plan improvements to the core commercial area. The street will have a new business friendly look from Broadway to Railroad Street. Our vital downtown will keep its strong position as an equal leg for our triumvirate of commercial centers in Missoula. The Rattlesnake Gateway project will bring order to the Greeno Drive entrance to the Rattlesnake Valley. New curbs and sidewalks will better define the street and improve safety and access to Greeno Park and Waterworks Hill. We'll build sidewalk curb ramps that meet Americans with Disabilities Act standards on several city streets to improve access to important pedestrian systems that link the community. And our Brook Street reconstruction will improve the road from Higgins to Mount Avenue with new curbs, bike lanes, and pavement. These projects represent more than $2.5 million in federal investment in Missoula, bringing improvements and jobs to the community. Another major street improvement will happen at Miller Creek in concert with our friends at Missoula County, where we'll build a new roundabout. I'll give you lessons if you need them later. At the intersection of Upper and Lower Miller Creek Roads, and the road between that Miller Creek Y and Briggs Street, we'll see new curbs, sidewalks, bike lanes, and a new northbound travel lane. And, cross your fingers, and anything else you have, we expect to complete the environmental impact statement for Russell Street this spring. Which will allow us to start design of the bridge and the road system from Broadway to Third Street. I hope to be your mayor when that project is complete. There are no term limits. <laughs> All of this means a really busy summer for our public works crews, for private contractors, for local, uh, local engineers, and material suppliers. Our wastewater division is planning for the coming year as well. And depending on costs, we hope to reconstruct the old treatment plant's headworks building. It'll improve hydraulic capacity, which believe me is important, and help reduce odors during the sewage treatment process. We're funding this needed project with sewer use fees that we raised recently for the first time in eight years. Missoula continues to have some of the lowest sewer fees in the state of Montana. Our Missoula Redevelopment Agency continues to lend uh, to lead in improving our business districts uh, to secure Missoula's position as a robust and profitable place to do business. It has a major role in the, in the implementation of our downtown master plan and is helping with the North Higgins Streetscape project. The good news in our urban renewal districts is that they're working the way they were designed to work. Reinvestment triggers reinvestment, and in the end, the district and the tax base are dramatically improved. Other MRA innovations in the coming year include the construction of a new parking structure at Front and Patty Streets designed to support both retail and employee parking and position the Macy's building for reuse as a retail center. We're doing improvements to West Broadway to encourage investment along that important corridor. 
We're positioning the city to take advantage of federal funds for a uh, potential streetcar system and other fixed route transit opportunities and positioning the city to take advantage of funding should it become available uh, for the conversion of front and main streets to two-way traffic. That's right, we can have it both ways. MRA continues to work with developers of the old Sawmill District to finalize the cleanup of property and move toward development of Missoula's newest urban neighborhood. An essential piece of MRA, MRA's role uh, is the construction of Silver Park and the connection of the Riverfront Trail System to the California Street Bridge. More about downtown. Our city clerk's office staff is hard at work reviewing the Downtown Business Improvement District's petition to renew for another 10 years. The BID has accomplished great things in the past five years, proving valuable in developing uh, the Downtown Master Plan and help keeping downtown clean and safe with its clean team, its downtown ambassadors, and its work in partnership with us on downtown quality of life issues. Our Office of Planning and Grants has just embarked on completing the Missoula Active Transportation Plan to better position the community for bicycle pedestrian funding opportunities. Their fingers are crossed as they await word on the federal TIGER grant application, which could bring a unique approach and a pile of money to Missoula for active transportation. OPG continues to actively manage the social safety net in these difficult times. Staff continues to strengthen our crime victim advocate program and build closer relationships among the advocates, city and county attorneys, law enforcement, and the courts. Our project Homeless Connect, held last week, connected 400 people in need with vital services ranging from flu shots to haircuts to pet care to housing. OPG is working with the county to implement our urban fringe development area plan, that's UFTA, to contain sprawl and enhance our healthy, active community. And I'm going to take one moment to glance in the rearview mirror. After two years of hard work, Missoula City Council voted 10 to 2 in support of Missoula's new zoning ordinance, Title 20. Its decades-old predecessor, Title 19, was the source of considerable community heartburn. The new code is a serious, modern rule book that will help guide development for years to come. It ain't sexy, but it's really important. And despite recent news, our economy is still strong, as our, is our ability to attract and retain businesses, certainly relative to other cities across the nation. Folks who live here want to stay. People who don't live here wish they did. That's because while we've grown, We've held on to the values that make us love this place we call home. A big part of those values are our open space lands, our trail system, our close by recreation opportunities, our parks and our green spaces, and our parks and recreation staff will continue to be good stewards of all that Missoula has to offer. Through February 5th, we're taking public ideas on plans to replace three deteriorating playgrounds in Maryland, Boyd, and Sacagawea Parks and build a new playground in Lafray Park. We're able to do this work because of $380,000 in reinvestment money we received from the state. Playgrounds are not frills. In the face of rising obesity rates among children, great and safe places for active play, free of charge, are more important than ever. Parks is also working to extend our Milwaukee Riverfront Trail system from Russell to Reserve Streets, which, which will link literally thousands of residents to our university parks in downtown. They're continuing to work on a new three-acre park off North Scott Street, White Pine Park, where we'll, we will eventually see soccer and other sports, a small playground, and a trail with trees. Conservation Lands and Forestry staff has finished an inventory of pine bark beetle activity in our precious Ponderosa Pine Forest on Mount Jumbo, the Rattlesnake Greenbelt, and South Hills, and are working on thinning and removing infected trees. You can expect to see the draft of our conservation lands management plan out for review in February. Our city county health department, while admirably meeting the challenge and potential panic of H1N1 during the past year, has buttoned that up more or less. We're in good shape, thanks to those folks. 
This year we're working on a Live Well Missoula partnership that will work on policy and environmental changes affecting physical activity and healthy eating. We'll also continue our work to make sure that vulnerable young families have access to ba basic public health services through our public health nurses who do fantastic work in our community. And because, because we've done it so well for so long, we tend to take for granted the work our environmental health folks do every day to keep our air and water clean and safe. The future of Missoula is rooted in the best of our past. When we work together, we accomplish great things. So this year, we're working with the Missoula Organization of Realtors to understand our housing market better. As you know, my interest in affordable housing is keen. We need more affordable housing to purchase, and we need more affordable housing to rent. For the first time, by most accounts, we'll have a survey that tells us where folks want to live based on what they can afford. And with that information, we'll work together to figure out how we can build more of what we need in places that make sense. A quick aside here, when we build a decent, safe place for someone to live, we employ three people. Three good jobs with a remarkable ripple effect in our economy. We're working with every city department and the council to make our budget work. We're cutting, we're saving, we're reorganizing to meet the challenges of declining revenues. In 2008, we asked for a report card. We asked our citizens their opinions about life in Missoula, and they told us they were widely satisfied. 81% rated the quality of life in Missoula as excellent or good, 97% considered the city live, and 88% are happy with the services provided by the city. I don't want those numbers to change, except for the better. And as we look at ways our budget can be leaner, I'll be weighing those reductions carefully against the work we must do to maintain our extraordinary quality of life. I, we, have an amazing asset to protect, and we need to take that responsibility seriously. Again, there's no magic, just hard work. And finally, here's what I hear more than anything from the folks I serve. We live in the best place. I agree. And that's why I'm launching what I call the Best Place Project. While Missoula is host to a number of economic development and business organizations that effectively meet, meet niche needs in the community and the region, no single organization today, in my opinion, effectively drives the effort to recruit business, to retain businesses, and to develop opportunities for businesses in Missoula. I believe that Missoula needs a single focused organization to guide the recruitment, retention, and development effort, much in the way communities large and small around the country have done with success. Missoula's peer, peerless natural and built environments, its vibrant downtown district, its first class public teaching and research university, its world class medical centers, and active, intelligent, engaged citizenry combined to create the best place to do business in the Western United States. Because we're such an attractive place to live, work, play, and raise our families, we must recruit businesses that complement the place and add value. Missoula needs to tell that story to bring new businesses here, to help existing businesses grow and prosper, and to create new opportunities for businesses through development and redevelopment with meaningful resources, the Best Place Project can tell that story over and over. The goals are simple and based on a short timeline. The project will succeed in the following areas. Recruitment. We'll recruit sustainable tech, biotech, or healthcare companies that provide family wages and benefits that have growth potential and can take advantage of local infrastructure. We'll work on retention. We'll create a menu of business services, local, state, federal, and private programs and funding sources 
and make outreach calls with the menu. We'll also facilitate follow-up with those businesses interested in pursuing those menu items. And we'll work on development. We'll identify needs for real estate, infrastructure, and facilities for existing or new businesses and make some portion of those needed facilities available. On Friday of this week, I'm meeting with a small group of Missoula's largest employers, folks who have volunteered as successful business people and creative minds to put the idea into action. My economic development team will help me work with all of you to, to create good jobs. I can't tell you that economic development is someone else's job anymore. It's mine, and it's yours, and it's ours. I'm going to need your help. This effort complements and enhances the good work of the Missoula Area Economic Development Corporation, the Montana Community Development Corporation, the Missoula Chamber of Commerce, the Missoula Downtown Association, the Downtown Business Improvement District, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Midtown Association, and the entrepreneurs in this room and out there who are quietly or loudly making important stuff happen for our community. When I knock on your door, Please answer. Please work with us. As I said, it's Groundhog Day. And I'm told the groundhog saw his shadow today. Six more weeks of winter. Between you and me, I cast a hell of a shadow. I didn't see it this morning. I think spring is just around the corner in Missoula. Thanks for the opportunity to spend a little time with you today. And thanks for all that you do. We'll do a little horse race. Thanks, Mayor John and Commissioner Michelle. Um, oh, I had a high anxiety following John. I had to follow him this last fall in a, in a presentation at the university when we sent off a bunch of AmeriCorps workers across Montana. And he did this, I'm a little teapot thing. And, and he did it very well, though. If you, have to, if you want him to do it for you, I'm sure he'll do it out in the hall out here. It was well done. Uh, it good. Uh, I think it, both of our two speakers today uh, Certainly, we, we want to hear what's going on and, and what the future brings. And I think that's the, the intent of uh, the chamber board and uh, certainly our business uh, affairs com uh, committee is to find out and let's get involved. Instead of the old, you know, what have we done the last year? What are we doing now and what's the future about? And I, I think it's a... Um, it's, it's a real opportunity for us in this room that are not public servants, through, that the business community that John just listed, all of those groups that we're part of, that it's time for us to step up to the plate and make sure that we are part of the solution and part of fixing it. We're, our job doesn't end when we, we vote these fine people in office and just tell them to go off and fix it. I think it is our our time uh, to make sure that we are um, not waiting for the knock at the door, but we're doing the knocking, and that we're going to our, our uh, city council, uh, and thanks for so many of you coming, um, to our, hello. I didn't do that, I didn't, good. I didn't do that, okay. Um, Okay, that ended that thought. Uh, <laughs> so moving right along here, <laughs> we need, Jack, get off your soapbox here. We, uh, it's time for question and answer. And uh, we can, we have microphones. We have one microphone. And all you have to do is wave your hand. We'll take all the true false questions first. And you guys, yeah, they like those. They have a mic up here, too. So you can either answer from there or, all right, we would ask that you just raise your hand. Somebody has. Anybody on this side, real close to me? We planted four of them in the audience. 
And where are they? Yeah, this is how we operate, Michelle. <laughs> okay. We have one. I'm always ready to break the ice. Um, homeless is a huge issue in our community, and uh, there's a big need for a new Pavarello. And can the city and county tell us what they're doing to help us find a new home for the Pav? I, I can tell you, Brent, as you know, I've been working with Pavarello Director as we've talked about this. I'm waiting to, to understand a little bit better what the real need is based on what board activity uh, tells us. Um, clearly, um, homelessness is not a single, single agency issue. Um, it's a community issue, and there are lots of folks who need to work together to, to, to crack that case. Um, and, and I'm not sure that I'm not sure that anyone ever cracks it completely, but, but we certainly, we're certainly interested in doing all that we can to help. Ditto what John said. We, we've been very supportive whenever we can in, in giving them some money from the, the one fund that we have to, to contribute from. And uh, I agree, it's not a, a single issue. There's a lot of other issues there. So um, we're doing what we can. We realize the need is there. Anyone else? I think the pasta must have had tryptophan in it. <laughs> and who was that? Do either of you anticipate bond issues on the November ballot? We don't know today if there would be a bond issue. On the city side, it would have to do with a police facility, and I need to test uh, test folks tolerance the it's it's a the timing is a double-edged sword the 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 economy is is tough people are trepidatious um, and in some cases struggling at the same time there's no probably no better time uh, to build something than today as some of the contractors in the room will probably tell you so we're going to we're going to see what uh, we're going to see what council thinks and what voters think from the county perspective, for the best of my knowledge, not at this time, we'll be starting our, our budget review process next week and um, going from there. But to the best of my knowledge, we're not anticipating doing that, no. Anyone else? That's wonderful. I've never heard, I don't think we've ever heard two people give such an all-encompassing uh, presentation and answer all your questions. So that's very good. Thank you. We have some closing remarks by our president of the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, Tom Severson. Well, apparently you've given the perfect speech. <laughs> Not a question to be had or other than the two. Um, you know, looking around this room today, uh, just a great turnout, and I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, when you look across the room at all the different private businesses, our city and county representatives, uh, different uh, groups, MDA, MBIA, MOR, uh, Job Service, um, MEDC, uh, just a great turnout, turnout, clearly showing that everyone is concerned and uh, has a vested interest in Missoula's economic vitality. So uh, on that note, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and uh, hope to see you next year. Thank you. Thank you.